Hi Crusaders, I'm Sophia and welcome to another episode of Seder View. Next we have Sydney who's going to come and talk to us about our cross country team. Hi there, I'm Sydney Osgan. and I'm here to review the Crusader cross country team in our impressive district meet this past weekend. The girls raced a two mile placing first overall and putting seven runners in the top 15 and it was a clear win at the finish line. As for the boys racing a 5k, they placed third and had Gabriel Estrada in fourth and Nicholas Mahoney in 15th. I'm here to talk with Camille Teresina, our district champ, and Nicholas Mahoney to share some details about our meet and the season. Nicholas, can you give us some details about the course and its level of difficulty? Uh, yeah, it was, um, it was pretty, pretty brutal, honestly. It was very hilly. Um, there was, it was also a little sketchy too. There was a cemetery in the, in the back of the course. So yeah, but we uh, pushed through. And as for the season, what was the hardest thing you had to do to prepare for the district meet and our state meet coming up? Honestly, like in the beginning, we were worried about even having a team, but we, um, we, got, we got a team together. We got the perfect seven. So we'll just have enough. And we've been uh, working pretty hard. So through all the workouts. All right. Thanks so much for sharing. And Camille, can you explain how our team was able to pull off such a win through training and strategy? Yeah, definitely. Um, we saw the course um, a week or two back. We got to race on it, which was really lucky for us because, as Nicholas said, it was a super difficult course. So we did a bunch of hill workouts early in the, in the, early in the morning. Wow. Um, and we trained on uh, Barton Creek Boulevard. There, there are a lot of hills. Um, and so we got to see the hills and we got to practice them. And what are our hopes for the state meet? Um, well, there is some decent competition we're keeping our eye out on a few different schools, but in going up there, we have it on Monday and we're looking to win. All right, love to hear it. And as a member of the cross country team, I can surely agree. Our state meet will take place on November 2nd in Waco. We have high hopes after five months of training and very early mornings. So make sure to wish both teams a good luck before their trip to Waco. Now we're gonna go to Lucy, who's gonna show us her DIY painted pumpkin. Are you tired of the color orange? Do you think pumpkins are getting too boring? Well, if so, then I have the perfect craft for you. Okay, so first I'm gonna paint it a nice beige color. Now we have a more colorful spooky jack-o'-lantern. Now we have some great artwork by Trey Carr.
Next is Jeremy with his sports review. Crusader Nation, welcome back to another week of the Crusader Sports Report. I'm your host, Jeremy McBen, and as always, I'll be recapping and looking ahead for the volleyball and football teams. On the volleyball court, your Lady Crusaders swept St. Anthony and TMI San Antonio. These well-deserved victories keeps the winning streak going for the Crusaders and moves them to 9-2 overall and 4-1 in district play. Currently, your Lady Crusaders are tied for second place in district play alongside Brentwood Christian. Up next for your Lady Crusaders, it's a big one, Hyde Park. The Lady Panthers come in at 5-0 overall, at 5-0 in district play, and 12-5-1 overall. The Lady Panthers are still the only undefeated team in the district. Hyde Park is coming into the Carter with a six-game winning streak, with five of those games being sweeps, and one of those most recent ones coming against previously undefeated Brentwood. So it's no question this team has talent. St. Michael's has brought their A game these last few games and will need to keep doing that if they want to walk out with a win. Expect this game to go back and forth with both slim leads and set victories. Please come out and support the Lady Crusaders if you can, or watch at home on Black Live. On the gridiron, the wins just keep coming for Jeff Dykes' Crusaders. Your Crusaders defeated Bernie Geneva 34-12. This was really just another strong showing in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. And this is what you have continued to see week in and week out from this team. The defense started out very strong, forcing a fumble on the Eagles' opening drive to set up the 22-yard Joe Meyer run and the 10-yard Daniel Center touchdown pass. This allowed the Crusaders to go up 7-0 late in the first quarter. QB1 Daniel Cerner was also able to make an NFL-caliber throw thanks to the help of his offensive line, picking up 14 yards on a 4th and 10 play on the next drive. The Crusader defense was able to force another big stop on 4th down, giving QB1 and the rest of the offense prime field position at their own 49-yard line. The offense was unable to take advantage of the field position with an unsuccessful fourth down attempt inside the red zone. Your Crusaders would respond, however, punching again from two yards out to make it 14-6 at the half. The Crusader defense would hold strong throughout the rest of the game, allowing no points in the third quarter. The offense just kept going back to the ground game like it had all night and torched the Eagles' defensive line time and time again. St. Michael's ground game was key in the victory over the Eagles as they had 267 yards rushing. Up next for your Crusaders, it's the St. Anthony Yellow Jackets who come in at 0-3 on the season. While the Yellow Jackets have struggled so far this season, the Crusaders cannot allow this one to get away from them. This is 100% a trap game, as is the upcoming game versus Side Park next week. Now, I'm not really worried about St. Michael's overlooking this team, or anybody really. Right now, it seems to me that Coach Dykus has this team's mind in the right place. The Yellow Jackets have struggled, however, to find consistency at quarterback this year. However, their defense boasts a ton of experienced players who know how to play in big games. Expect to hear Josh Clark's name a lot over the PA system on Friday night. The Yellow Jackets star running back garnered 961 yards and 10 touchdowns last year. San Anthony will most likely look to him time and time again on Friday due to the young civil caller. On defense, look out for the defensive back Ismael Flores, who had three picks last year, along with linebacker Eli's Borrego, who last year led the team in tackles with 95. If St. Michaels keeps doing what they're doing, they'll if St. Michaels keeps doing what they've been doing these past three games, then they'll be five and one. Right now, just stick to the script because it's been working for you. As always, good luck to all Crusader teams and athletes competing this week in their events, and go Crusaders! All right, Crusaders, we're going to close out this interview with a short film by Jake Cameron. Bye, Crusaders.